Ah. Alright, so here's what we got. This is, a, this is a zing it. Um, are you guys going to put this on YouTube so he can show his guys how to do it? I can do that, yes. yes. Right, we're just going to do it. Sorry? Or you know, sorry. Yeah. So we took a, a chunk of rope, 10 inches of it or so, cut it off, and then peeled one of the strands. We're going to use this strand later to lock stitch it. Um, we're going to put a longer tail than you think you would need. And I'm going to crimp it with my thumbnail right there, and that, that marks the beginning of the eye. And then we'll make an eye big enough to fit over a throw bag. Um, maybe right around there. So that's going to be our eye. Normally that's how I splice it, and that's enough. But I'm going to put Sharpie marks on it so that it shows up in the video easier. Right, 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 right about there. Since this is not a load-bearing splice, we don't have to follow any particular rules. We can kind of do whatever we want. Um, and so we're going to go down, I don't know, an inch from here. We're going to pull one strand out. And maybe if I had some half-decent lighting, this would be a little easier. No, I don't worry. It, I'll, I'll He's be, just making excuses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you fix it, then I won't have excuses to blame. It's also worth mentioning that about 15 minutes ago I was in bed, so <laughs> might not be at the top of my game. Um, it is important to notice that this is an eight strand rope, and I'm going to go through and pull three or four strands out, and it's hard to see which strands are going which way, and it is not uncommon to accidentally pull all four strands that are going the same way and then the whole tail unravels on you, at which point you just chop it off and start over. Um, so go down a little more. And pull out another strand. And now I just noticed that I have two strands that are going to the left, so I gotta make sure that my next strand is going to the right or else we're gonna start to have some big trouble. Normally this would be done with a, uh, have an awl that has a nice handle on it and a nice skinnier point, but you make do with what you have. Alright, so we're just going to pull three strands for now. I don't have my Dyneema cutting scissors. If you're doing this at home, you might not have scissors that are going to cut this well, but a very sharp knife on a cutting board will slice right through it. Um, make sure it's a sharp knife or get a razor blade. Look at this. These are really sharp scissors and barely wants to cut it. All right. So we could do... So you're using a needle for a... I guess a fid. Yeah, I'm using the needle for a fid. And I'll show you one trick is that you could take a needle, and if you try to put the point of the needle down through the rope, the point is so sharp that it'll snag all the strands on the inside. So you could use the back end of the needle. And obviously, be careful so you don't poke yourself as you're pushing it through. Um, if you're going to do a few of them, take one of your needles and blunt the tip over so that it's not sharp. And then it works like a normal fid, and it's pretty easy. Um, so at this point, there are three choices for the type of splice that we can do. Um, we could do where you go through a couple times and then bury it down. Or you could do a straight bury. We're going to lock stitch this and it's a low load splice. So there's no reason to do the through and through thing. And it looks really clean if it's a straight bury. Um, so I'm going to recommend that. Sometimes people want a locked Brummel on theirs, in which case most people think you got to take the tail end of the rope, which means we got to unspool this whole 200 foot thing. Um, we're not going to do that. We could do the Mobius splice, where you do this funny trickery thing on the end. Here. But I'm just going to do the straight berry. And I know that this is going to go down to about there. So I'm going to crimp that as a visual marker. And then push this together. Get it in there nice and clean. Yeah. Oh, that's so neat. I like that. 
and this part's a little tricky. You gotta. You got a urinal joke in the background. Yeah, that was Jim. Push it in, and I'm gonna pinch the needle and slide the rope up and over. Get some more. Oh yeah. Strength-wise, you could totally get away with a tiny, short berry, a one-inch berry, um, but you will. Cut off notice a lot of chafe there, so I like to make a much longer. <laughs> so there's our, our mark right there. Right. We're going to pull that just until the mark goes in. Right. Pull it inside so you don't ever have to see it again. Mm. And then I'm going to pull it out to make sure that we've buried enough that the tail is going to go in, which it's about to. So I'm going to stop right there, pull it back out, and then we're going to make a really long, smooth taper. Oh. Yeah, so, go ahead. Yeah. so at this point, you can unravel, or technically ravel, the whole entire thing. Um, and I'll struggle through this part because we don't have good cutting uh, tools here. But there's one, work your way down. Two. And while we're on the, oh, that's the last one. Okay, so that's our taper. It doesn't look like much. It's actually a little uh, off-centered, so we're going to... That for you. It's just throw line. <laughs> All right, so before I suck this in, it's worth pointing out a really neat tip. If we, we would have made that tail about 40 inches long, which sounds absolutely ridiculous, unroll this thing, bury it down three and a half feet or so, when you're done, you have the benefits of a lightweight throw line, but the part that you hold on to when you're throwing is now double the thickness. So it has a really neat feel in your hand. It's much gentler on your hands, and when you let it go, you're, you still have that lightweight rope. So anyways, we'll hold it together at the top, stretch it out down here. Beautiful. That should make so this right now is strong enough. I'm, I think if we brake tested it, it would still break at a few hundred pounds. Um, we're gonna lock stitch it because I think you guys can see if we were to pull this, it would come right out. And while you're manipulating it through a tree, it would definitely do that. So um, this part I'll struggle a little bit because I don't have a little tiny needle with me, so we'll use the big needle. Use that strand that we cut from this piece of the rope. And just take, you're going to anchor it by coming into the eye, way up here, running it down the rope, pop it through. Take really tiny stitches. You want them to be invisible. So, sorry, are you just going um, from one side to the other, the straight? These stitches are are adequate to do the job, but they really stand out a lot. And we can make this invisible and more functional so that when other people look at it, they go, wow, how did you do that? So whatever that length is right there, do it a quarter of that length, and you'll get the same function okay. in a much sexier uh, package. So I'm not paying attention to where the strands are or anything. I'm just coming in and out. You could get in there and go parallel with the strands or something. And I'll probably do five stitches. And then the last stitch, I'll go down an inch or so. Pull that through. And so now the tail, excuse me, the ends of the stitching is buried about an inch up here and an inch up here. And that gives me the slack to pull it. Cut it close. Pull it. Oh yeah. Don't be very. Cut it close. Yeah, there we go. And then for our last time, bury it. Bury it. Oh boy, that is easy. So there you go. Why did you say 40 inches, Nick? That's that's just a little trick that I've tried to with, make it with uh, throw line. With throw line to only. give you this kind of feel, that nice thick feel, exactly. Well, well, like up here where you're holding on. Holding it exactly. So whatever the distance is from the tip of your hands yeah. down to the ground. Something like that. Random. I don't.